All right, friends, it is December 7, 2023. Just a few short days away from the event, the Betelgeuse asteroid event scheduled to happen sometime between the 11th and the 12th of December. I'm thinking it's the 12th, where this asteroid Leona is going to pass in front of the Betelgeuse star, part of the Orion constellation. This guy right here, dim it or make it invisible for 5 to 15 seconds. I covered this in the last video, but I, I want to just kind of try to cover some of these main points again. So if, if I'm repeating myself, I'm not I'm doing it because I want to I want to make sure that I get all my points across and to make sure that I'm getting everything that I want out that I want to say. So Okay, so again, this is the target uh, set up by my buddy Dustin. He issued that to me in September 15, a couple of months ago. I just finished it maybe about a week ago, week and a half ago. He gave me the feedback that it was, this was the target, Betelgeuse, the red supergiant that they're saying is going to go supernova kaboom at any moment. Uh, Based on how far away it is, maybe it's happened already, but I guess we might know that by now, but maybe not. Or they're saying it could be another 100,000 years before it goes supernova. Who knows? But the tasking was, uh, Dustin was curious to see if I would be able to get any remote viewing information about the supernova, but he also had all these tangential, I think I might have said that correctly, tangential <laughs> aspects that he also put into the testing as well. This one being the one that I was drawn to the most, which is this guy here. Any available perceptions of the star's effect on human consciousness throughout our past history currently and in our future. That is um, was a big deal in these sessions. Also I'm reading this now and this part is a big deal too. Any available cognitions of the event as it relates uh, to being viewed by an intelligent curious sky watching life form on Earth slash Terra the word Terra is going to come up in my research. In the last video, I, in the pre, for the previous session, past two videos, I talked about this event happening on the 12th, how it correlates, in my opinion, to the COP28 event that's happening right now that will come to a close on December 12th. Again, this asteroid situation that's going to affect Betelgeuse on the 12th of, in, a, in five days, Dustin didn't know about that. I didn't know about it until I got the feedback and started doing my research. The other interesting thing, again, I think I mentioned this before, but I do want to mention these things again. Dustin gave me this as a target almost four years ago. It was in December of 2020, and I did maybe three sessions. I wasn't happy with any of it. Abandoned the project because I, I wasn't happy with my remote viewing. I'm like, I'm, this isn't. I'm off. Uh, uh, um, you know, let's scrap it. Scrapped it. Boom. Gives me the target again in September, a couple of months ago. Unbeknownst to him, this event is taking place in five days from now. It's very important because I have to look at the previous time I tried to remote view that was in January of 2020, and it just wasn't time. It wasn't time. Then to have uh, Dustin give the target to me again 
now. And the research that I'm doing that relates to this star, Betelgeuse, indicates to me that now was the time to do it. Now was the time. Right here. This is the third session. And probably the last uh, video, uh, unless there's more that I'll, I'm going to try to get everything in an, into this video. If, if more research comes in and more interesting things come in, I, uh, then I'll do another one. But I'm hoping to get it all done now. I'm going to go through this session, and then I'm going to go through some of these research points that I think are valid to the session and the quote-unquote target. All right, so here right off the bat, here's my here's Beetle Guys. Right at the beginning of the session, an energy movement. Uh, there's an event here, something happening. This goes to the tasking of the supernova, uh, which is the, the one of the primary objectives of the remote viewing, is to look at the supernova event of this. So I feel on target on this. So the rest of the session then makes more sense to me, and there are, in my opinion, important points. M moving on. The creation of something. Here again is the symbology. When something was created or made, but then I had a question, how did it happen? A burst effect, and again, this symbology of the eye, the eyeball, the eye comes in. The burst effect, like, like looking at something, and then there's a burst effect, bursting. But what does that even mean? I wonder. The opening of something, like a doorway, symbolic, an interpretation of light frequencies or spectrums. This, to me, goes to uh, the primary objective here. That if this thing blows, this you know, the thing goes supernova and every, people are watching it. Okay, I get that. The eye symbology is also very important. Now we get into some of the more um, symbolic stuff here that is, I think is tells the story here. Like a snapshot of who you are. Who are you? Question mark. Where are you? Question mark. To put a hold on someone. To quote unquote capture them. Even for a moment. Then a type of streaming or download occurs. What does that even mean? I wonder. A catalog of others. Capstone. A deep reference. That was an interesting to me. What did that mean? Deep what did that mean, reference? To know everyone, identify everyone. But why, oh, I wonder. An inventory and a sequence, a binding. To put things or people together. How was it made, though, I wonder? Crystal, diamond, glass. This is interesting. To put people and things together. This was interesting too. A way to store souls. Store souls. I'm going to go through, I'll, I'll, I'm going to reference back on these once I start going through all the stuff that I found. That is really interesting. What does that mean though, I wonder? Souls. The idea is to recognize you like a magic spell, to hypnotize, enchant, bewilder. And what happens then, I wonder? A record of you, but why? I had to contemplate. A book of souls. To see who and where you are. The idea of a quote unquote slave ship. What does that even mean, I wonder? The notion is if they see you, they own you. If they see you, they know you. But is that even true? I wonder. Only in the spell. 
then I had to wonder in the midst of this, because this was all very interesting to me. What if the individual projects back into it as opposed to receiving it? Like a counter spell. Have to let you in the matrix, a question. That would make for a very interesting experiment. Changing the code. Or push the coding in reverse. It would be a system change. A reboot or reset could be exposed. Exposed. One would have to project as opposed to receive. How would that work out, I wonder? A standstill? A strong individual? A strong mind? A strong brain? A strong focus to affect the mechanics? That's how that would work out, in my opinion. Counterspell. Like being inside a projector, flashing frames, flashing images, one after another. This again has a sense of hypnotic induction to it. Flashing these frames in a fast projection. For what though, I wonder? To get this effect, to alter people's perception, a type of mind control, a Pied Piper, leading people into a type of netherworld. And I found a reference for netherworld that really is very interesting. I'll, I'll get to that. What does that even mean, though, I wonder? A not-so-real world. This happens when the brain is subjected to this an optic sensation, very hypnotic. It's a type of quote-unquote magic. To put someone to sleep, like a spell, like in the first, the first session. What is the proposed outcome by the creators of this? Heavy influence and control a quote-unquote mass control, with quote-unquote mass being like a ritualistic rite being carried out, like like you go to church on Sunday, it's a mass. It was that kind of, that kind of thing. That, that's what I meant by that. Why, though, I wonder? An indoctrination of its disciples, as in those who witness are then considered disciples and partners of a type of coven, a mass ritual, a new religious order, a new religious order or movement, a new order. These people then go out as disciples, having been initiated within this structure. In concordance with some doctrine. That was interesting to me. What is the doctrine? An agreement of sorts between or within this happening. An acceptance to be taken out and shared. Almost to the point of preaching. Like, go there. What is this burst effect, though, I wondered? It's like an optics camera, a flash shot, a template. But a template of what? I had to wonder. Many screens flashing, pulsating in random. Pulsating in random number patterns, primary numbers, like a database feed. A series of flashes into the eye. Why the eye is so important. Like a pulse wave reading optic nerve patterns. A series of images in a cone shape. This is like an eye here. To not just identify, to identify. Detection device. 
But this random numbers was interesting. Why? No one can be the same or identified per region numbers. I'm not sure what that means. Sequence, categorized, sequenced and patterned, pulse wave readings, pattern recognition into a type of cache. Cache, though. And again with the eyes. The eyes are so important with this. A series of eyes captured, sequenced, and delivered. Data. Delivered, though, I wonder. To where? This kind of data sending thing. A new, a, a main menu, like a vault of memory flash, on and off, absorbing and recording data. Then there was this again with the eyes, like an eye nebula in space being recorded by this satellite. Pattern detection on light frequencies and matching them to an elemental database. Atmosphere readings and pressure readings and mercury readings. Mercury elements, but how, I wonder? Is it liquid metal as an element? A flowingness to it, like a silver stream moving and flowing, chemical readouts, pressuring or pressurized, compressed, or heavy, like being in an area or environment that feels heavy and pressurized, like a strong gravity produced by a fast spinning body. Now I don't know what happens I'd have to look this up when a star goes supernova does it is it when the core starts spinning really fast and it blows up I just don't know but there's a lot of things in here that um, I've been able to find some of them I've gone over in the previous videos like the, the comet that's going to pass the significance of Edelgeist, the star, and the Babylonian myth, or what was important to the Babylonians, and the, the importance of Babylon itself. Specifically, the god Enlil, who was the, the Babylonian god associated with Edelgeist, and the other gods associated with Enlil, which we'll get into here. Some things again that came up in this session, like storing souls in Book of Souls, again takes me to this notion here. After Anu, Enlil was the most powerful of the Mesopotamian gods. Keeper of the Tablet of Destiny, which contained the the fates of gods and humanity, and con considered uh, an unstoppable force whose decisions could not be questioned. Tablets of Destiny. Keeper of the Tablets of Destiny. Sounds like the Book of Souls to me. I found that very interesting. This element here, again, I went through these. This was coming up in the previous sessions as well. The importance of the eyes was all over in here, and it's very important in in their culture as well. Let me go along here. I don't want to get out of place here. Let me go to this. A lot of this stuff I've went over already in the previous video. The, import, the connection between Betelgeuse and the Tower of Babel and what's happening now. But I want to focus real quick on the importance of the eye in the ancient Mesopotamian and Babylonian culture and religions. Protection, devotion, and destruction. The symbolism of eyes in ancient Mesopotamian art. This is very important here and why I, I know that it came up so prominently in my sessions. 
The eyes of an important member of the Mesopotamian pantheon could be perceived as arbiters of justice and all-seeing. Like an all-seeing eye. Solely depicting the eye of a god could represent the whole god, including all of which the god represents. This was especially true for the sky god An, the moon gods Sin and Nana, the air god, the air and earth god Enlil, the water god Enki, who we're going to get into, and in later periods, the patron god of Babylon. Marduk. So this is this is very important here because like I was saying in the previous video the importance of the date December 12th of this asteroid flying in front of Betelgeuse the cop the cop 28 uh, conference which is happening right now today is December 7th it's going to end in five days December 12th the same day the similarities between Babylon Betelgeuse the god Enlil and the Commonwealth Games show that took place last year with the then Prince Charles, now King Charles III, as the main guy. And what they depicted in that show that they performed, the performance through, that they did. I went over this in the, in the previous video. I'll go over it again very quickly here. In the, pre, the, the ceremony for the Commonwealth Games last year, this is how it connects again to Babylon, the Tower of Babel. Starts out with an exploding star. Beetle guys, they're thinking it's going to go supernova, an exploding star. These asteroids and shards fly to Earth, 72 of them. These people pick them up from in their, in their different nations, 72 different nations. The 72 different nations of the Commonwealth. They all come together for these games. In this speech, right here, this woman, oops, let me get through that. This woman says that her best friend, Ellen, L N or N L told her some stuff about the Commonwealth. It was the, the, the importance to me was that this woman, Malala, has a best friend named Ellen. Another name for N Lil is L L Lil L L Lil L N The names are too similar for me to not wonder if the people who wrote this speech for her told her to use the name L N L N Bab L on And she says here that the 72 nations of the Commonwealth have come together these games. Again, again, I, I talked about this in the previous video, but I, I gotta say it again. The, the importance of the number 72 in Babylon, in Bible references, 72 nations listed in Genesis, 72 orders, elders of the book of Exodus, 72 names of God in the Kabbalah. The Tower of Babel, the story of the Tower of Babel, is that Everybody spoke the same language. They came together in this area. They wanted to build a tower up to heaven and be like the gods or attain. If I can find it. Apotheosis. Deification. 
as they're attempting to do that, Yahweh says, that's not good. And he confuses them all with 72 different languages and scatters them across the earth. 72 different languages, 72 different nations. Here we are in this ceremony here, where the 72 nations all come together for this Commonwealth ceremony. In the Commonwealth ceremony, you have the Tower of Babel here that is being destroyed. They go through the 72 people, or 72 nations, come together. They appease the bull, which we're going to talk about in a minute. And they then put out the fire uh, in the tower. So the fire uh, is out, the tower is complete, the bull is appeased for him. Let me continue on now. The significance of the eyes from the session, which is going to come up again. Inki is the stepbrother of Enlil. Enlil, the most powerful of the gods, keeper of the tablets, Mesopotamia and Babylon. Inki, mythical, myth, ritual, and order in Inki and the world order. I didn't know that. I didn't know there was a, some book, uh, ancient book, indicating Inki and the world order. That was a new one to me. That was a new one to me, but very significant. I have in this session a reference to it here, a new quote-unquote religious order. This is the significance of where all these things are tying in, of just as it as was proposed in the elements of the tasking, how the ancient part is influencing the current part and in the future. Inky and the world order. But who's Inky? This is very interesting and it relates to COP28 and King Charles. Inky, who is the stepbrother of Enlil, Enlil Inky helps humanity. Inki also plays a major role in another Akkadian Babylonian myth, the Atrahasis, which is the Mesopotamian version of the Great Flood. In this myth, Inki was responsible for the creation of mankind, who would serve the gods. The race of humans multiplied quickly. Uh, Overpopulation, a common phrase today. The race of humans multiplied quickly, and Enlil, Betelgeuse, the chief deity, became irritated by the amount of noise they made. Therefore, he decided to reduce the number of humans. Depopulation, big topic today. By sending catastrophes to kill them. Catastrophes meaning earth changes, floods, earthquakes, torrential storms, hurricanes, earth changes. Big topic today. That's how it all ties in. Each time, however, the people appealed to Inky, who would tell them what to do in order to survive. This is very interesting here. Because the people didn't go and appeal to Inky to have Inky go and tell Enlil, hey, don't send the catastrophes. He would tell them what they had to do in order to survive the catastrophes. That's very interesting to me. And how it, in my opinion, relates to COP23, which is, again, ending December 12th, the same day, the asteroid's going to be in front of Betelgeuse. 
It's interesting to me because Count 28, which is happening right now, King Charles is there. This is his thing. This is his baby. They're there telling us what we need to do to survive climate changes, all these impacts. It's all our fault, you know, just like here, just like in this story. We're too noisy. We get too many numbers. The population needs to be reduced because we're just too noisy. But Inky is going to tell us what we knew, need to do in order to survive. And that's exactly what COP23 is doing, too. Telling us what we need to do in order to survive. That's very interesting. Inky. Inky has been interpreted as the Lord of the Earth. He is the stepbrother of the god Enlil and son of An. Inky in the world order, again. This is interesting to me. I'm going to read a little bit of this. Lord of heaven and earth, self-reliant father Inky, engendered by a bull, begotten by a wild bull, cherished by Enlil. Now this word, I didn't really know what that meant. Engendered, what is the hell does that mean? Engendered by a bull. To bring into existence, to procreate, to come into existence. So Inge was brought in by a bull. Well, that's very interesting because in the ceremony, they tamed the bull. Here, there's the bull represented. He's tamed. There. The father of Inky is tamed, maybe in, to appease the gods or appease uh, maybe even over to Enlil so that we don't get too much of this. Try to appease the gods so they don't wipe us all out. Inky here talks about the world order. Inky and the world order. Well, we're not unfamiliar with that. We are in the era in the era now of a new world order. Is this Inky's new world order? I have to wonder. It seems that way to me. Just as I had proposed in the previous video, that given all these connections, I propose that Charles may see himself as the king of New Babylon, rebuilding the, the Tower of Babel, as he showed here. There it is. The Tower of Babel is rebuilt. The 72 nations are back together. The 72 that were cast out by Yahweh and given different language and scattered across the earth. They've been reunited. The tower is built. Inkies Inkies world order coming to fruition in King Charles' New Babylon and New World Order. Interesting as well, not only did the newly kinged Charles uh, propose his new Terra Carta, which are the rules for Earth, but he's also proposed the Astra Carta, with his crown over it. So with the Terra Carta, we could assume 
that Charles may see himself as the Lord of the Earth, but he may also see himself as ruler of the heavens and earth as well. In his new Astra Carta, the launch of the Astra Carta framework begins. Uh, oh, let me try this again. The launch of the Astra Carta framework brings to a brings to reality a vision of space sustainability outlined by His Majesty King Charles III in his previous role as Prince of Wales. So between the Terra Carta and the Astra Carta, again, I'm reminded of this, the ruler of the heavens and earth, Terra Carta and Astra Carta, in that, in that I propose that just as I mentioned in, in the previous video, apotheosis, where in the capital, capital rotunda, is a painting, an apotheosis of Washington, 72 pentagrams, again, 72, just like the Tower of Babel, a portal, 72 pentagrams inside is the exalted, now deified George Washington in this other world here, which also, if I can find it, in this session I had, let me see if I can find it. I said a type of nether world. Probably looking right past it now. Here. People leading people into a type of nether world. I found that reference to the Babylonian nether world, if I can find it now. <laughs> I can find it because it's really, really pretty interesting. Uh, I may have, I may have lost it, but there is a reference to the Nether World. Let me try to find it. Here, Babylonian Nether World. They got a whole thing about it. The fate of the soul, everything related to the soul in its, here we go. Ancient Mesopotamians conceptualized the nether world as the cosmic opposite of the heavens and as a shadowy version of life on earth. Metaphysically, it is thought to lie a great distance from the realm of the living. Physically, however, it lay underground and is poetically described as located only a short distance from the Earth's surface. M metaphysically, a great distance from the realm of the living. And that's what I was picking up on here. Leading people into a type of nether world. And the use of the word netherworld, very significant. The I. Again, throughout the entire series of remote viewings, the I was a big deal. How might that relate to where we are now? Possibly with this, the world ID. 
where you look into this orb and it takes a picture of your eye. And it stores it in a database for a world ID. It's associated with world coin, where you'll basically have your identification based on your eye scan into a database. And they'll pay you a little bit of crypto, crypto to do it as well. I, my sense is that this element here is associated with this idea here, which connects to this idea here of Inky and the world order and how it relates to the new world order. And now that connects to the Tower of Babel, the reconstruction of the Tower of Babel, the reunification of the 72 tribes, under the new king, the king of the new Babylon, and who also may see himself as the new Enlin. Ruler of heavens and earth. Heavens, again, I can find it, from his Astracarta, with his crown. So far, that's what I found. Fascinating session. It, all of this makes sense to me now. If I would have done this in January of 2020, none of this would have made any sense. This connection would not have probably have even been known. or how it relates to this. Everything relates and makes sense now because I know where I am in time because remote viewing is my anchor. And it's also how I learn. So I learned all of this stuff from remote viewing. Remote viewing is my teacher. Thank you for your attention. I hope you find it interesting. Many more to come.